The sun is out on this beautiful Sunday morning for you to enjoy the day. We'll get to your forecast in just a minute. Welcome into this special Sunday morning edition of WVLT News. I'm Alan Williams. You know, many of you are in prayer for healing for many facets affecting our country's cities this morning. You can add to that anger, protests, and a lot of violence in the last 72 hours over the death of George Floyd, who died in police custody. Here at home, downtown Knoxville was hit by vandalism late last night. KPD confirming this morning 50 to 100 protesters made their way through the city, vandalizing property, including the Ruby Sunshine restaurant in Market Square. A group made their way to Gay Street, where one person was arrested for assault after throwing an object into a police SUV, striking an officer in the head. Well, that officer was uninjured. Another KPD officer sustained minor injuries during the arrest and was given first aid. Police also arrested another individual with 10 firearms along with narcotics. Now in Nashville yesterday, protesters smashing windows and setting fire to the historic courthouse in downtown. Lower Broadway was ransacked, including breaking windows in Ryman Auditorium. Early yesterday evening, Governor Bill Lee mobilized the National Guard in response to the violence. Metro Police tweeted last night they deployed tear gas to protect the historic city courthouse building. A curfew was set last night for 10 o'clock in Nashville, and according to police, the streets were essentially cleared by 1130. Governor Lee said if anyone was out after curfew, they would be subjected to arrest. We have a crew in Nashville. We will have reports for you tonight on WVLT. Closer to home, protests also last night in Morristown turned violent after one officer was struck by a rock. Bottles and other objects were thrown at law enforcement. This began around 9 o'clock last night as protesters held a stand-in in front of the Morristown Police Headquarters. Police Chief Roger Overholt told our WVLT crew that most of the protesters left, but one group began throwing water bottles and rocks. Overholt says he's very disappointed with how that night ended. As the actions by the protesters was escalated to vandalism and violence, and so it's just really disturbing that we're hearing these things advertised and brought into these cities saying we're wanting to safeguard someone's rights, then these type of actions occur. Protest leader Ashley Weaver says despite tensions with officers last night, she's thankful, she says, for those who serve the Morristown community. And just because one or two have portrayed themselves as corrupt, we now label them all. No, their lives matter as well. Not every police officer is corrupt. Not every police officer has an intent to be trigger happy. Not every police officer is here to harm us. And that's why I shook their hands. Because at the end of the day, they're not here to harm us. Not every last one of them in any way. The protests ended last night in Morristown when officials ordered the crowds to disperse around 1 a.m. Nice at, shooting at the photographer. At us, like directly at us. Directly Why at us. Why are they yeah, doing that? He's shooting at our crew. I don't Do know. they not know that obviously they see the camera? Now to Louisville, Kentucky here. This was video that went viral internationally at our sister station. Reporter Caitlin Rust and photographer James Dobson were both intentionally shot with pepper bullets, they say, by police while live on air. They complied with a police instruction to move to a specific spot. Caitlin and James suffered bruises but continued reporting that night. Across the country, frustration spilled over. Michael George has more now from Minneapolis. From Los Angeles to D.C. to New York City, fiery protests raged across the country over the death of George Floyd. We appreciate and respect all peaceful protest, but now it is time for people to go home. Angry scenes like these played out in American cities for another night, with demonstrators setting fire to police vehicles and marching through the streets. I'm willing to walk, scream, do whatever I need to do to let people know that I'm, I'm really, I'm tired of this. Baltimore, Reno, and Pittsburgh, and some people took advantage, breaking into stores and looting businesses. Get out of the way! Minneapolis, where it all began, was among more than a dozen cities imposing curfews to try to get the situation under control. 45 minutes into the curfew, police are launching tear gas into the crowd of hundreds of protesters. They're trying to disperse this crowd, which has no intention of leaving the scene. 
Go. Where do I go? I'm with WCCO. Several journalists reporting on the protests, including reporters with CBS, were hit by rubber bullets and even taken into custody. University of Southern California law professor Jody Armour says what we're seeing is bigger than what happened to George Floyd. There is a convergence of a lot of different cases at this moment that I think has raised a lot of a public awareness and made the public especially sensitive at this, at, this point, at this point in time. Floyd's family is calling for the other three officers at the scene of the incident to also be charged. Michael George, CBS News, Minneapolis. Meanwhile, Target stores are temporarily closing dozens of its locations in the U.S. as protests continue to erupt. Included are 71 stores in Minnesota, 49 in California, 12 stores in New York. In a statement, the company says its focus is on employee safety and helping communities heal. Target says the workers impacted by the closures will still be paid for their scheduled hours. The Target website so far does not include closing any stores in Tennessee. Thank <laughs> you.